Hi, I'm Susan Clare, Gourmet Quilter, because quilting is delicious. And today I thought I'd show you a little block that I've drawn up. So this is a, a block that I feel looks a bit like a book. I thought it was kind of fun to do something that was a little bit book oriented. It's something you can use up some leftovers for. So this would be the front cover. This is a little glimpse of the back cover behind the pages. These are the pages and this is the spine of the book here. And I think it's it's quite a good little block. It measures, um, I shall tell you any minute now, seven and a half inches by eight and a half inches. So it'll be a seven by eight inch block finished. Um, if you wanted to do something like embroider and stuff and embellish or applique, you could do plainer colours or you can use these fun novelty colours like I have for some of them. So many things you could do. You could make a book bag, you could make a cushion, you could make a quilt. Now there's a thought. So I thought I'd show you how I've gone about doing it. So I've cut all the pieces out here. I've actually just done one or two tiny little bits of sewing, but just so that I can show you how to make it. So, so if you want to write the measurements down, I can tell you the measurements. So for our book cover here, we've cut that one four and a half inches by five and a half inches. And for the pages, it's one and a half inches by five and a half and the spine is one and a half by five and a half, but then we needed a little extra square of the spine and that's to make this little corner bit here to one and a half inch square. And then we need a one and a half inch square of the background for the bottom part of the spine and also over here for the other end of the pages, just to give it that slightly angled look. Um, and then these are one and a half inch strips on the surrounds, so they're six and a half inch and seven and a half inch. So, Oh, and the one I didn't tell you about was a little bit of the, the cover piece that goes on the back piece. That's just three quarters of an inch wide by five and a half long. And the pages are five and a half inch long, but by one and a quarter inches wide, because we need to make that back up to the right size again. And I think it's quite nice if that little bit of the cover is just showing. It kind of makes it look a little bit more like a book. Um, so... I've actually gone ahead and I've stitched that on, so that was just three quarters of an inch, so it's not very wide onto our one and a quarter inch wide piece. And now we need to press that. And I'm going to suggest that we press it so that the seam goes into the pages, so that that leaves us most of this piece or enough of this piece to sew our next seam on. So I've just left it because it's a little tricky when it's that narrow to press, but just so you can see, it's no different to other pressing, but. What I often do when things are a little bit tricky like this is just perhaps finger press them first so that that's nicely pressed over and then I can bring the iron over rather than trying to make it cooperate as I iron it entirely. There's a level of cooperation that comes with things. So we, we, this is our pages now and the back cover of the book. We've got these little squares here that we're going to put on because on here we just need to have these little angles and we've also got an angle here, so the spine is actually made out of two pieces because we just needed to be able to make that angle across there. And I found it was easier to put it on as a triangle rather than not. So with the, the back cover part away from me, I've already marked my squares with a diagonal line just with a pencil from point to point. And I'm going to position these on one at each end, so the background colour as I look at it on the right side and the spine colour on the other end which will match up with the spine shortly. So the diagonals are both going in the same direction. So now I can sew those two little seams there, or lines, so I'm sewing on that diagonal line that I've drawn. Now I just need to trim off those little corners, so just quarter of an inch away from the stitching on the corner side. So I'm just laying my, wait a minute, laying the ruler with a quarter inch line right along the stitching, so I'm just cutting quarter of an inch away and turn it around and do the same at the other end. And whilst we're doing that, there's another one here on the spine. This has another triangle on the lower part. I've actually already stitched that on to the lower side so that it comes across like that. So I'll trim that while I'm here as well and then we can press all three of those together. I 
and so this time I've just pressed those where possible in towards um, the actual book so with, away from the background basically so I'm just going to press that and the same thing would apply you could finger press these there's a little bit awkward because there's an extra seam in there this one here for the spine I have actually just pressed the seam into the triangle so that one goes over just a little bit more easily and this one also I have pressed towards the colour away from the background so we're doing really well already we've got a spine and pages for our book so now what we need to do is join the spine to the front cover and then we can join that piece onto there so I might go ahead and get these bits joined and uh, I'll show you how, I, how I'm getting on as I go. It's just quarter inch seam allowance all the way. And I'm going to press that one in towards the, the, the cover of the front cover, the larger piece. And then this one goes on top here. So I'll go ahead and get that one stitched so that you can see that as well. So these stages, if you were making a quilt with several of these blocks, uh, you could certainly be chain piecing a lot of these. You could have several little books ready and be doing this, the sections one after the other, which often speeds things up. So that's looking pretty good so far. We're going to lose some of this up here because of the next seam, or not quite the next seam. Now I just have to put the two sides on and then the top and the bottom just to give it a little bit of space around the block. So I'll go ahead and do this and I'll come and show it to you when it's all finished. So I've finished the block, I put two sides on and a background top and bottom as well just to give it a little bit of space as you can see then you don't need to do any sashing or anything and it spreads them out. Now if you were wanting to make a quilt like this as I said you could embellish, you could embroider things on, you could applique something in particular for whoever's going to be lucky enough to receive the quilts or you could just use kind of the fun fabrics I think they're quite cute so that was a little book block that I've designed specially for you I hope you enjoy it and show me what you've done with it thank you